As Christmas approaches every year, nativity scenes begin to pop up all around us. People make the crash in their front yard, churches set up a stable in the sanctuary, and countless pious families will make little manger scenes on the mantle. If you're a Catholic watching this around Christmas time, you probably have a nativity scene set up in your home. I know I do. But when was the last time you actually sat down and meditated on the nativity? That's the point of the crash, right? To have it call you into that moment to meditate, and to pray. But once it's up, it just becomes part of the scenery. I know I've overlooked that crush many times, no matter how many times I pass it in my home. Let's change that and settle in to study this profound moment, at least for a few minutes. Now, when it comes to selecting a single depiction of the nativity, there are thousands, or more accurately, millions of instances to choose from. For today, though, we're going to focus on the 1772 painting by Anton Raphael Mengs, The Adoration of the Shepherds. Anton Raphael Mengs was a mid-18th century German painter, but he spent much of his career bouncing between the Catholic patrons in Poland, Rome, and Spain. While in Rome, he converted to Catholicism and eventually worked for the Vatican teaching other artists. He painted today's subject, the Adoration of the Shepherds, in Madrid, where it still remains. Now, at first glance, a modern viewer might not see anything particularly special about this work. Sure, it's a masterful painting, but weren't they all back then? And what do we see in it? We have the heavenly hosts above, the inhabitants of earth below. Nothing new there. We see Mary and baby Jesus. Joseph's here, and the shepherd's over there. There's a manger. Adoring faces. Heavenly light upon the infant Jesus. Yep, got that too. What's so special? Well, how about the nativity itself? That's the first thing we overlook here, isn't it? This is perhaps the most decisive event in human history. It's easy to forget that because we've heard this story over and over and over again every year without fail since we were children. But this was a real child with real parents. He was born in a stable and laid in a manger. It happened. It is Jesus who lived and breathed, who spoke and walked this green earth. It is Jesus whom we meet at Mass and with whom we speak in prayer. We know this child. So that's the first thing we need to remember. This is the same Christ whom we ourselves know from our own lives. What's so special about this scene? He is. A moment ago, I said this depicts the most decisive event in human history. That might not be entirely the case, though the spirit of the statement rings true. But no, the the title of most decisive event in human history really ought to be reserved for those very things that this child will eventually do. That is, his death and his resurrection. And that's the second thing we should look at. This child's destiny. Think of the other quote-unquote great men of history. Julius Caesar, Winston Churchill, George Washington. Their actions certainly changed the world in seismic ways, but what about when those men were born? Did they matter so much then? They were little infants who couldn't feed themselves, much less lead nations. We don't commemorate their births except as trivia, because their being born doesn't matter so much as what they did once they were grown up. But this birth is different. It matters from day one. Not just because of what this child will eventually do someday when he is older, but because of who he already is. He is the Son of God. God incarnate. The Anointed One. Emmanuel. This is what Anton Raphael Mengs begins to capture in the Adoration of the Shepherds. So let's give it the time it deserves. The focus of Mengs' work is the Madonna and Child. But rather than put them at the center of the panel, Mengs places the most relevant figures in this circle off to one side. This adds a bit of depth to the painting, and it gives him more room on one side to depict the shepherds who are in the foreground. Now, the most striking aspect of the adoration is the lighting. Without a doubt, it is the Christ child himself who is the source of light for the scene. 
Mengs even included a torch off to one side, but this is only to show how useless it is compared to the literal light of Christ. We can see it most clearly on the shepherd's hat. His brim casts a clear, dark shadow, contrasting with the strong light of the divine presence, whereas the torch barely seems to make an impact. Its light is the yellowish light of flame, whereas the light of God is so pure that it illuminates the colors of the scene so clearly that it does not change them. The light of Christ is so bright that the shepherds in the back have to shield their eyes even as they strain to see over Mary's shoulder. There are no shadows on Jesus. He and the Blessed Mother are the clearest figures in the whole piece. Everything else is illuminated only in relation to the child. There is a lesson in there for sure, but we'll move on. Let's turn our attention instead to the shepherds who give this piece its name. And here, the details are what really begin to unlock some deeper meanings for us. Take the shepherd in the foreground. We see he's wearing an animal skin, rather than the linen cloaks like his fellows. We don't know if Mengs meant this, but figures in sacred art wearing animal skins are often referencing Adam and Eve. For Genesis says that after Adam's fall, quote, God made for the man and his wife garments of skin with which he clothed them. In one interpretation, this is God making a sacrifice for the sake of Adam and Eve, because of their sin. It is not the sacrifices that mankind makes to God that matter most, but really the sacrifices that God makes for man. Most of all, the sacrifice of his perfect, spotless, blameless son. With sacrifice in mind, consider the shepherds again. We know from the historical record that the shepherds of Bethlehem tended the sheep of the temple. That is, they reared and raised the lambs that would be offered to God as a spotless and perfect sacrifice at Passover. Bethlehem, we know, is just outside Jerusalem, the mountain of sacrifice itself. Newborn lambs are very delicate creatures, and if their skin is bruised, their wool would not be pure white. So to keep them spotless, the shepherds would wrap the newborn lambs in swaddling clothes and, if they could, cover them in beds of hay and straw. If they failed in this, the lamb would not be fit for sacrifice, but rather it might be blemished and spotted, like the sheep that would eventually make up this shepherd's own garment. So when the shepherds heard from the angels that they would see the Savior that has been born for you, and then they saw him wrapped in lamb's clothing, one can only imagine what they'd be thinking. One final detail. There are three figures in the whole piece whose eyes are not watching in scene, but instead they look directly at the viewer. The first is Christ. He was born into history, but he is not bound by it. He knows us and he lives with us still. Likewise with the angel above, which bears the olive branch of peace. He's an angel, so he's not bound by time. He can look at us and point to Christ because he sits at the throne of God. But the third figure is off to the extreme left. This is Anton Mengs himself, a self-portrait insert. He is standing beside Joseph as silent observer, sitting among the crowd of humanity. But note again the lighting. It suggests he's actually more alike to the angels above him. Now, this isn't a self-canonization. He's just saying something about his relationship to the scene. He's not there as a shepherd to adore the Christ child, but as a guide for us. He looks at us and gestures to the scene beyond. Come on in, he says, and look with me. Come and see the God incarnate and the Blessed Virgin. Come and sit with the saints before our Lord. This Christmas season, let's accept his invitation. Whether we see the nativity in art or on cards or at church, let's not let the ubiquity of this scene rob us of its magnitude. Instead, let's sit for a few quiet moments and adore with the shepherds our glorious Savior. <laughs>